Uh, Carson Anderson, what's up, dude? Uh, sorry, a little delayed. I'm having an allergic reaction again, so pardon if I'm scratching. Actually, earlier today, I met up with Carson, so cool, and I'll show you what I got from him. But also, I was at a symposium for lupus and uh, autoimmune or allergy reactions and stuff, but I had all sorts of hives. My eyes were kind of swollen shut this afternoon. So pardon if I look a bit like a train wreck more than the usual. So I have a lot going on today. A lot, a lot going on today. So everything's getting redone. The tank that I had the cribs in is no more. It is being disassembled and it has gone septic. So I talked to Steve with Aquarium Zen, very knowledgeable fish keeper over 20 years. Um runs a fish shop obviously he is the curator for amazon.com their corporate headquarters all their fish tanks and things like that so he's a good guy to chat with when i have issues as well as other folks uh, that i know that have a lot of experience so i talked to him and the fish just kept getting sick kept getting sick guppies were all fine so i think they're just bulletproof essentially the shrimp were fine, so that makes me believe that it was a bacterial thing or a viral thing, and that also means that then it's in the substrate, and it's probably anaerobic bacteria in the substrate. Is this the camera that I'm looking into? Yeah, okay. Sorry, my phone's actually upside down right now. But how are y'all doing? Welcome in. As I said, sorry I look like a train wreck. I just had a bunch of um, hives and allergic reactions. So did the EpiPen. We're good to go. Rock on. So let me show you what I'm doing here. And this is the exciting, uh, well, there's lots of exciting things, but this is the exciting tank. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, it's all murky. Well, that's because there is a bunch of Amazonia light, uh, in here. So Big old bag of that. Now this period is a crucial period when you have a tank because this is the time when all the nitrates and things like that are through the roof and the ammonia. And so your plants will be like superheroes, especially if you run CO2. So got to hook the CO2 up. I've got a guy that is helping me out with that uh, who is currently watching, Eric, or currently uh, a follower of the channel as well. His name's Eric. So thanks, Eric. Thank you, Carson, for uh, the stuff that's going on that I'll show you in a moment. I know a lot of people are watching uh, uh, what's his what's his name's channel. Uh, Bob 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 Steen, Steen fought. Great dude. Uh, but I'm just gonna go through a couple things for you guys right now um, as we're waiting for people to filter in. I'm also gonna do. Uh, switch some stuff over from a bucket uh, that I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on. So these are plants that were from, and there's just masses of all sorts of plants, everything but mosses. So anything that was stem plant or root plant is going into a 10%, uh, actually it's more like 8% bleach bath. And that is to disinfect any anaerobic bacteria that may be in there that was in the last tank. Also, I've got these porous rocks and I'm gonna do the same with them, let them soak a little bit. And then after that, I'll probably boil them because this tank is like a dead zone. It is, it's scary how bad it smells once I, I broke the sand cap on things. And so, really need to take care of all that. This is just tap water here. There won't be any fish involved with any of this for a while, so no need to fret there, guys, or worry about it. But yeah, so this is a solution of one part bleach and about 12 parts water. And basically, I'm gonna soak the plants in this for a good, and you know what, we can add a little more water, which is, this is just, normal tap water here um i'll add a little more bleach too but basically 
when you deal with this stuff, I'm doing it with my bare hands, shouldn't, it, it can definitely cause you some issues. Dry out your hands to say the least. At the worst, it can kind of burn your skin or peel your skin. So uh, don't mess around with bleach unless you've done it before or you look up some instructions. So these plants are getting bleached. Let me wash my hands real quick because I just touched the bleach. I'll be getting some gloves for later in this process. But how's everybody doing? Is anybody in here that's listening and participating? Y'all doing okay? I did some serious moving around and lifting of stuff today. Uh, it's when you're like, oh, I needed a moving team. I also got a, well, I already had the TDS meter, but now I have a pH, electronic pH reader. And we have uh, some wood that was in the tank that went septic, a septic tank. <laughs> uh, not really funny, actually. It killed my cribs. Uh, but that is kind of the best way to treat this and then what i'll do is after these go all in here the the bleach will come out they'll soak in normal water for a time and then they'll also uh the rocks will probably be scolded with very hot water and uh keep in mind doing this you lose all beneficial as well as harmful bacteria so it's kind of an emergency uh maneuver also here we got some big chunks that i'm going to try to position in here got to move a couple things around but i'm just curious uh what's new in everyone else's life how everybody's doing how your fish are holding up so uh drop me a line this is also to serve as kind of a video because there's just too much going on i didn't want to film every second of what i'm doing because there is just so much going on right now in, with my fish room which you'll see very soon while we let this soak and uh, yeah so there's a lot going on lots of moving pieces as they say um, <coughs> also over here we've still got uh, plants that need to be processed they'll be going into the new tank as well as some tanks downstairs the other tanks are still doing great this tank over here um, if I do say so myself, uh, I think it looks very nice. So it's chugging along with the blue shrimp in there. This tank here, we had a bit of a, an accident and uh, a bunch of guppies got out that had been in the old 20 long that was over here. And those guppies were in a holding pen. Well, the holding pen drifted as holding pens sometimes do it drifted underneath the falling water and sunk the pen enough that the guppies then got out so hey what's up rocks and talks um just washing my hands off washing the bleach off my hands i can feel it on there and it's starting to get itchy which means it's starting to uh yeah i might hop off actually after i explain what i'm doing i kind of just didn't want to make an official video update but so i wanted to thank carson a lot so we've got a setup for co2 that just need i just need to fix a new little needle valve bubble counter spot and uh, figure that out and then i also have all sorts of parts we have a new uh, tank which can also go up here if you guys have been keeping track of the progress this is a rat's nest and i need to sort it out but right now i'm just getting things in place this was the tank that went septic when i get off of here since you guys don't want to watch me shovel gravel i will be getting all of this nastiness that's been in there too long out even this moss is questionable i might soak it in the bleach water for a little bit but i don't know if i have much hope for that uh, the cribs down here, they're enjoying their thing. They've got an extra airline in there now, which I think will make them feel happy. And then up here, the Killies were going to come out and go back into this tank. This tank is now uh, out of action, out of commission. But we do have this tank, and let's get the light a little better on it. So we have this tank, and right now we've got the critters from, from the long that had the crash. 
And then we've got all these rad Corridoras, which I will spend more time on in another video that Carson hooked me up with. We traded uh, an aquarium for it. And so, yeah, is this water too cold? I wonder what's up with that. Uh, the fish are huddled. But in any case, they are. there are, are four varieties here, I believe. Uh, maybe three. Wait, four? Yeah, four. So that, and then we've also got a, uh, a little uh, uh, panda, uh, gud uh, not gudgeon, sorry, uh, gara. So panda gara, love those guys. I'm excited for him to grow up and become a productive member of the family, paying taxes and so forth. So down here looks like a total bomb went off. I have shrimp coming in from Flip any day now. I don't know what's going on with the shipping part, but they I talked to Rob, ready to go. Um, and this tank is now going to become by default kind of my uh, quarantine tank. I'm going to get a smaller one set up later, like a 10-gallon, or possibly... Um, Carson actually brought me an extra Fluval Flex and some bits and pieces. Uh, he's moving, and so he was kind enough to do that. I can definitely put that up in here. And, uh, yeah, so then that will work out. Up here, this rack is a little tall for me, but for the lighter tanks, I think it'll work out. Right now, I'm just deciding how much I want to do hang off the backs or air filters and whatnot. Like, clearly my... Cribs, I want to have a combo of all of those things uh, because I'm trying to breed them. But ideally, this quarantine tank uh, where I'm going to treat everything that was in the other tank uh, that's all going to be hanging out in here, probably low on the plant scale, but everything will be treated in here. And then once it gets the clear, I will no longer have this as a quarantine tank because of its prime real estate, as you can see. Uh, definitely my rack. I, I could probably put a five gallon right in here the other way and run all that off air. So I could run everything off air currently, but I still like the, the hang off the backs or maybe some power heads or something. So I'm just running you guys through this real quick, just so you know what I'm talking about. And over the next coming days, I also have a new red and blue spectrum light, which will be nice. And then I've got zip ties and things to attach stuff to the racks above. Everybody's doing good in the Caradina and Killifish tank. The Killifish did lay eggs, but the, uh, the Killifish laid eggs, but the shrimp immediately started eating them in droves. And there's only two shrimp in there. There's only two crystal shrimp in there, so... Um, which thanks Chase for hooking me up with those but you can see here I've got power supply that actually has its own um, like breaker in it basically so it'll trip uh, and if any fuses or anything it's guaranteed not to trip uh, and blow a circuit or anything like that here and then so do all of these so they'll need to be rewired hidden tucked away and then probably put in something waterproof. But right now I just want them where I can get to them so they're just loosely zip tied. Welcome, welcome. So I was telling people this isn't a long cast. I'm just telling people what I am up to because I'm gonna be super busy the rest of the evening because I tackled, thank you, uh, Carson. So we've got Pandagara, uh, Corridori, uh, Napoensis, uh, Corridora uh, Defax and Corridori, Corridora Axle Rods. So, very cool. I'm super stoked because I love Corys. So now I have too many species of Corys. I guess seven species of Corys. And maybe eight. Hello. Hello, Patricia. So, I'm just telling people what I'm doing real quick. And... So in here, actually, because Steve at Aquariums and my local shop, they don't sell anything online yet, but they will hopefully soon. He's been kicking around the idea, and I'm like, yeah, dude, why don't you? Come on. Like, you have the coolest stuff. Like, a lot of people want the lilies and stuff and just different rare plants that he gets in because he is such a plant nerd in the best of ways. So 
Basically, if you missed the beginning of this cast, I'm soaking all the plants and things in bleach uh, water from the last tank that went septic. I'll need to throw out all of that substrate, which is a total pain in my butt and expensive. I mean, not crazy expensive, but you guys know every little penny counts. So after the bleach tank, it'll just soak into a regular bucket of water. And um, that'll be, it'll, it'll evaporate off. The fact that all this is going back into this new rimless ADA style tank with the slimline light. And we're probably going to do a canister filter below it just so there's nothing on top just to make it look muy perfecto plus CO2 and the active substrate. So it'll have to take a couple weeks. But in this process, I will be uh, basically using as much to my potential or as much of the potential that it has to um, grow plants at warp speed because when you have a tank with the Amazonia it it uh, definitely grows at a crazy pace and it's too dangerous for fish at this stage obviously because of the nitrates and the nitrites and so I'm getting my hardscape taken care of in this bucket here that has been bleached. The bleach will evaporate off, but the plants, because we had either a bacterial or a viral load in the substrate, and it smells like bacteria. It just, it smells like putrid sewage mixed with a dead animal. So I think we found the culprit of why everybody kept getting sick and that's unfortunate stop killing things silly luckily i've only killed three things so that's good but i'm not like showman that's an inside joke who that is his hobby is not fish keeping it is fish killing uh and but i'm starting from scratch basically in in uh it's, it's the equivalent of nuking your substrate by putting a 10% bleach concentration on everything. And so yeah, working on that. Uh, Bentley, welcome. Bentley is another person that I highly recommend. Uh, any questions, if you see him in the chat chatting, he knows his ish and don't argue with him, he's right. You like that Bentley? Sorry, I think the lens got a little wet. Okay, so I'm gonna have to pull those plants out of that bucket. Let me just show you what else is going on on the table, which I started before all this. Uh, I know just enough to be dangerous. That's right, Bentley. So I want to get this, uh, in fact, we'll do this right now. I want to get the bulb out of here with the lily, and I want to get it into the substrate of a better, a better setting. So we're pulling it right now. Let me get these pads all sorted. Lily pads. So, all right. And I'm gonna throw this right into the big tank. So it's way too tall for this. That's okay, Lily's, Lily's will figure their, their ish out. That, and I'm not worried about once the, if there is a little bit of chlorine or something on on these guys, not worried about it because of this the brand new substrate. Uh, if if anything, it'll evaporate off. Also, any sort of ammonia, things like that. Um, and here you can see the root ball of this uh, Nymphaea uh, micrantha. And this is the viable root part, but in theory, you can break it off. It rots down in here just naturally. And then you can take this ball and start another one. But I'm not that I'm not that desperate yet. But check out under the new light that Steve sent me. Oh, you're getting Shelly's Bentley. Are you getting uh, what's his name? Shelly's. <laughs> Are you getting uh, Showman's uh, Shelly's? Or does he even have those anymore? Oh, okay. Nice, nice. All right, hold on, guys. One sec. Let me untangle this. Uh, 
this was the plan of the month. <laughs> uh, it was a brownie eye or something like that. Uh, Bentley probably remembers the full name, but it was a brownie eye. It's gone nuts, so we'll we'll put it back into. For now, I'm just trying to grow plants and get the nitrates out of this darn tank uh, since I'm using this uh, active substrate, as we say. And in that capacity, uh, yeah. I'm not I'm not worried about um, chlorine or anything like that right at right at the, at the time because it's all going to be a couple weeks before I can take care of everything in that regard. So it doesn't even matter about prime and yada yada yada. Right now this is just a plant tank and it will remain such for a while. Steve from Aquarium Zen was kind enough to also give me um, enough of that substrate that it will last uh, quite some time. You can see my light actually. Uh, yeah, that's the plant. Uh, Micro Marii Brownii, Brownie Eye, <laughs> or Brownie, I don't know what you said, but yes, what he said. Now. This lily, uh, some of the plant, some of the leaves are not looking so hot. I'm gonna take care of that right now. Uh, lilies can be trimmed back really hardcore and still come back as long as they get their nutrients. This was the one that was probably wrapped around something anyway, so I'm throwing that there because I don't have time to deal with other stuff. But I still have. Luckily, they're still sealed. But I also have a bag of stuff that came out of the new crib setup for the little cribs. And then over here, the big tank, luckily I haven't had to touch it really. It's just doing its thing. And the bulb split on its own with the lily blossom, the purple lily, will just be growing there. So rad. I don't have to deal with it. Over here, I'll show you guys again in case you weren't on the chat, but um, I also have a 20-pound uh, CO2 uh, system coming. I need to get a new needle valve for that. Uh, and a bubble counter, maybe a split or two. But the cool news that you may not have seen is that the little, uh, what are they called? Gosh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, you guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, the little endlers, the leopard endlers, are propagating just fine, and the males are starting to show, even though I don't know where they're all hiding right now. They're in there somewhere. But... At least I hope. If if they're not, I, I'm I did something real wrong. If just the babies are gone, but uh, yeah. So oh, there's one right there. So this is one of the youths. He's growing up just fine, getting his color. We'll see how how this generation comes out. But his tail is starting to look like it will be spayed, which is great because none of them looked like that at first. And yeah. So let's feed these you're gonna have trims on the brownie at the auction for me or do I still need to grow more um hey tilapia store hey Bentley are you asking like do you want some trims just for your own setup or whatever because I'll happily give you some of that I've yeah it's grown like insane uh and it the place it grew insane surprised me it was growing insane actually in this tank so I think I have another one in here, too, that I'd already cut. Yeah, back in there, we've got some. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally, man. I'll, of course, I'll hook you up, Bentley. Um, and then we're going to feed this tank just for for giggles right now. Um, I'm not giving them their special food, but we'll give them their mediocre food. They're, they, they've been good fish today, but not not that good. So I try to switch up what I feed them. But yeah, so these tanks are good. They're doing well. All is well in three tanks. Everything else is a ish show in the other tanks. So this will be the Aquarium Zen tank. There'll probably be some crystal shrimp in here eventually too, um, or some sort of caridina. I plan on keeping the pH low since it's already got the substrate and doing, I haven't decided what, maybe leave me a comment on what you guys think I should do. I ex actually have extra Amazonia soil, and 
I got the light type that that uh, settles quicker. So I know it's all murky now, but I just did it today, um, like a few hours before y'all came into the picture. Now let me go downstairs one more time before I get off of this cast. I'll probably do a cast tomorrow if it looks a lot better, or later in the week if not. I know I'm I'm uh, cast blocking, as they say. Uh, Bob, he's really just blocking me. Like you guys, Bob Steenfile, like. Learn from him more than me, guys. But we've got all these Corys I wanted to show Bentley um, that I got from Carson today. And I traded away the tank from the competition <clears throat> that's a real heavy-duty, sturdy, like, <clears throat> real thick glass tank that I had. But I just, it, it was too much of a centerpiece rimless to just hide away on a rack. And so this tank's doing well right now. Also inoculating some substrate. And then uh, in, this is the tank that is, as Steve from Aquarium Zen says, went septic. So I'm afraid of everything, including the filters in this tank. I don't know how paranoid it should be, but it is a kill zone. And there are one or two fish still in here. I moved it around this much water. And uh, it's something that didn't affect the shrimp or the snails. The levamisol did, or levamisol. But two rounds of different types of antibiotics, dewormer, general cure, and ICX, and salt throughout the course of the month didn't cure whatever they had. And then now I was getting that uh, dropsy or bloat, like pine cone looking fish in the, the Danios were starting to get sick. So I'm removing all of this substrate because you can see there's some growth and like I said it smells pretty foul when it slides and I was carrying it and you got a whiff of it. So I'm removing all of that. I don't know if I'm going to try to like bleach dip some of the moss but <clears throat> save this crypt obviously. Um, but yeah so that's going on there. This tank's happy as a clam. This tank for uh, for the Caradina shrimp, shrimp from Flip. It's doing well. They're eating all my killifish eggs, which is a bummer. Now I gotta get the killifish out. And yeah, I don't think I trust anything in that tank, Betsy, either. So the new plan kind of is to uh, take this and I'm gonna put everybody in it without the old substrate that's been through this tank. And I'm gonna try to de contaminate them, deworm them, all that with a pretty bare bones tank. I'll probably put some potted plants in or something. And then uh, down here later, I think this will be a grow out tank for cribs. That's probably the plan because the Lacunja had eggs as I mentioned a while back, but they then, when I moved them like an idiot, they then uh, got startled and I think they ate their own eggs but they're back to their mating ritual so hopefully they'll they'll spawn again and uh, this time uh, yeah put them in a bear tank well I'm gonna keep this sand in here just like I'll spread it back out evenly um, almost assuredly ate them but I didn't realize now I forgot to mention that yeah I think they ate them because they were stressed um, I think that's what happened but also so Carson came by and much to my wife's chagrin, but my happiness, thanks Carson, uh, he dropped off an old Fluval tank and some parts and some lights that I can kind of cobble together as well as a little Fluval mini pump and some odds and ends in here. And then this, I gotta figure out. So this is, yeah, it's a Fluval Spec V, I think? What is it called? Uh, Fluval Spec, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so my plan with that is probably to make it the long-term quarantine tank and slide it behind this one. Uh, probably. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Also, in here we've got, this is what I really wanted because I'm getting a 20-pound CO2 tank. And hopefully that'll run several tanks or one forever, whatever. Uh, but here the needle valve uh, broke off in there. And so this little piece here needs to get replaced and uh, the bubble counter too. So uh, let's see here, like, like such. And then we'll be gravy. So I got to figure out how much that'll cost or whatever, but I'm happy the tank went to a good home. Also, I got 
this light out of the trade, which is a nice light, um, which, let me show you real quick. Whoa, sorry guys, I know that's too bright, but maybe you can see as it dims. It's just a red and blue mostly light, so that'll be great for growing. Came with the Fluval spec, I think. And so for in here where I've just got uh, DIY lights that I made out of uh, LED and uh, aluminum track rails, um, yeah, I'll have growing potential on at least two of these levels. And then I'll probably take these lights off and raise them above here or do a little stand lights there. For now, I just have an LED that's a 100 watt LED equivalent hanging over that tank just to give them semblance of night and day. But actually, a lot of light comes in here naturally, so I'm not too worried. This is the big headache that I'll have to sort out. So I've probably got, you know, 15 hours easily of sorting out of stuff to do. Who would have thought that... Um, I guess I got too many too many tanks were sitting around and all of a sudden came together at the same time plus generous people. And so this should be really awesome for me and obviously but for you guys to see some cool new stuff in the future plus teaming up with Steve the hope is we build a following on his Facebook page. Let me wash my hands again by the way guys. Bleach is nasty stuff um but yeah we're hoping to build a following on his facebook page and then he is if people seem interested he is going to start shipping uh plants and and shrimp so yeah uh so yeah exactly bentley a lot of people even in the area like his shop but just can't get in there it's only open short hours and uh so He's also taking on more and more, taking care of all the Amazon stuff that he does uh, at their, their headquarters. And so it'll be good if he can open up a new facet of business like Aquarium Co-op has done or Dustin. And he gets really cool plants and things because he knows people like Tom Barr and, uh, you know, um, he just knows folks that have been around a long time. And, by the way, Dr. Pepper, Nectar of the Gods. So, yeah, um, that's what's going on in here. I know that's chaotic as all hell, but I'm going to get back to work. I wanted to keep you guys updated. I have a tour video that I'm going to launch. I can launch it tonight or tomorrow, whatever you guys want. But of Chase's house, who breeds shrimp, plus he's got some endlers, but he keeps a ni nice and tidy house. He's the one who's 3D printing API uh, chart things and he flies helicopters that are like drone helicopters that go upside down and do all sorts of crazy stuff so he's a really interesting guy and that should be fun uh, stuff to check out plus uh, he has the dancing man shrimp so we'll go into that plus his project to try to breed green really shrimp which more power to him, because nobody knows for sure what the genes are. Also, i got to clean up all this old crap, medicines and charts and... Ugh. So, this is going to be a project and a half, but I'm excited, and I think now the channel will be worthy of, you know, I have some space. I, I might split up that 20 long into four fives with a mesh, like a matten filter type fet, uh, mesh thing, and... Uh, yeah, green reallys, crazy person. They exist, I've seen them, but nobody knows for sure that I've encountered what causes them. So he's got, uh, what does he have? I think he has a female, what is, he has got red really females and other things. And then he's got, or he's got a, no, he's got every color, nice grade of the females you could think of, and then male, red really, and blue really, I want to say. And he's just going to see what happens, and it should be evident which one knocked up who, because the females will be the color there, and then as they get pregnant, he'll separate them. So it's a huge task. He's been working on it for two years, and... Yeah, more power to him. But that video will be... I'll, I'll upload it. It's like 20 minutes long. 
And I'm going to be doing more plant features because of the teaming up with Steve at Aquarium Zen. So now I'll have a partnership with... Uh, yeah, uh, I want to come film your rainbows too, Bentley, as I've been saying. Uh, but now you can see why I've been a little sidetracked busy. Um, but yeah, so this tank will be the Aquarium Zen tank. And hopefully, as I can afford it or as Steve wants to hook me up with it, depending on how many folks go to their Facebook page and say like, saw you on YouTube, uh, you know, I'd love it if you started shipping plants or, you know, whatever. Uh, if he starts seeing that feedback, he straight told me that uh, he can hook me up with other stuff. And then also that is going to be his barometer for like if people are interested. Um, so you can watch the tour of, of Aquarium Zen also on Dustin's channel. But we went in there and if you live locally, you know it's a cool shop. He gets a hold of a lot of local breeders that other shops don't seem to get a hold of just like aquarium co-op does the same thing sort of but he's on the more um artistic end of the spectrum with ada stuff and uh quite frankly the expensive end of the spectrum but yeah so i just wanted to kind of let you guys know what i'm doing and show you show you the mess that is uh m the death of me my wife will be ending me if this isn't fixed up by tomorrow, at least out of the way. And um, I'm getting thanks for all the great work. I love all your videos. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. If you guys have ideas for videos or you want to know more about one of my species, let me know. As I said, I'm trying to put out a video a day, but that is like an update video, a weird little interesting video. And then the uh, other part of that should be once to three times a week an educational video, which is why the channel was formed. But we're trying, or me, I'm trying to hit 100 days in a row without in, uh, with posting a video and see what that does to search ranking optimization with search engine optimization uh, because I've been informed that it, it helps trigger something so i don't know they still haven't they've been working on it for two months now uh trying to well first i qualified for uh having the affiliate program obviously but you don't have all these resources like there's no super chat there's no um helpline there's no uh uploading a backlog of videos other than marking them as personal link shared so there's a lot of features that as a smaller channel until you hit 10,000 or even 100,000 you don't get and I just want I'd like to have that ability so uh, yeah but the channel is just growing at a great clip um, as I said today I had a brutal allergic reaction midday and I'm pretty worn out so I think I'm gonna try to get these plants uh, finished soaking in the bleach then we'll put them into the uh, fresh water, let them soak a little bit there, then we'll pop them into the new uh, high-tech tank, which will grow them like weeds, and hopefully suck the nitrates, ammonia, and all that good stuff out of that uh, active soil, which would be toxic to the fish otherwise. I plan on making videos on a lot of aspects of all of this, but I just thought I'd kill a bunch of birds with one stone in this video. So I'm out bird hunting, shotgun throwing stones. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night. I'll upload that video uh, visiting Chase's house. Not a huge room, uh, fish room or anything, but he's a rad dude and uh, does some interesting stuff. He has a Fajaka puffer, too, so you'll get to see that. He's putting it in a 150-gallon tank, I think. Uh, this He just got the tank, and he was setting it up the other day when I was chatting with him. So we'll probably also take a visit over there again at some point, and especially when his dancing men uh, reproduce again. So, all right, guys. Well, I will talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. I know this was a very uh, dry and just like, holy crap, what a mess he has uh, kind of uh, vlog thing. But thanks for watching, and there's a big fish auction coming up on the 21st in North Seattle through GSAS, the Seattle Aquarium Club. 
And hey, Chase, what's up, man? Um, yeah, sorry, you're catching the end of it. But basically, all right, just because Chase is on here, uh, everyone else, you can ignore me. But there's an auction if you're in the Seattle area on the 21st. Go to GSAS, uh, Greater Seattle Aquarium Society, and check it all out because it's cool as heck. Um, they'll be open to the public, lots of everything. And I thought I was going to have all these plants to trade and stuff, but now I just might be buying, even though I don't have a lot of money right now. But no worries. Everybody has been so kind and so generous that, um, yeah, I just, the, the channel from sponsors to whatever, just it's growing quick. And I'm, I'm, my heart is warmed that people like to nerd out as much as I do. Um, but Chase, I was going to show you what a mess I have going. This is all cobbled together, by the way. So I started my collection. I've put $400 into fish keeping total and from what you see here. Everything else has been buying and selling cherry shrimp and doing... Uh, buying and selling guppies and yada 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 and parts and stuff. So we've got the crib tank. We've got the tank that I need to get all the substrate out of. There's three kinds of moss in there that are all tangled up now because cribs love to eat things and move things and decorate and whatever they do. And then we've got new quarries in here. We've got shrimp in here. This will be for now a short-term quarantine tank. Then I need to know from you guys what we should do with it. Do we do like a four section and have shrimp in there or something else like that? And then we've got the 5.5 uh, .5 pH uh, where I put the shrimp that Chase gave me uh, up in here. And they are doing just fine except they're eating all my killi eggs. So like I don't know how they fit in those little shrimp bodies, but they do. So that's what's going on guys. I got a big mess. I got to clean up stuff uh, and keep on keeping on and hopefully not burn down the house with this electrical rat's nest. But there are uh, surge protectors and also uh, breaker protectors for so that it doesn't trip that um, running through here. And then there's another one tucked behind the door that, that has like a... I'm not an electrician, but I talked to my friend who is and it has like some sort of capacitor that... Uh, one, it can produce more energy than the one outlet has, like an amp. And then if it gets too high or hot, it'll burn the filament and just kill it rather than letting it melt or overload. So hopefully that all works well, because I know I've seen some funky fish rooms. So, yep, like I said, I would appreciate it if you do like Aquarium Zen. Uh, go to his website if you want, which is just AquariumZen.net. Um, or go to his Facebook, easy enough to find either one. But on his Facebook page, I'd love it if you give him some love and say, saw you on YouTube, uh, you know, like your shop or whatever. I'd love it if you'd start shipping plants or something along those lines because I think he should. Everybody keeps asking me where I get these plants and things, the oddball ones, and it's usually him. Same with fish, and he is a connoisseur of odd plants in his personal collection as well so uh yeah but since this tank is from him i'm plugging his shop but it's the shop that i go to the most anyways and by default i would be plugging him regardless so now we've got flip and we've got aquarium zen as kind of partners working with uh they'll provide stuff i'm going to talk about it i'm going to be doing more species videos too again so like We'll talk about specific plants like the one I just did on this lily. And then from there, he'll be able to have those videos. And they're going to get a little more structured with an outline a bit more, where it's probably care at the beginning so people can turn it off after five minutes. And then uh, the second part will be the history, the nerdy, the weird uh, stuff related to that. So, uh, And a mosquito flew in and is now on the water. What are the chances that like the one day it's nice out? Um, they come in when I open the door for a sec. All right, guys, well, I gotta get this ish cleaned up because the wife is coming home after the Sounders game and I gotta get that septic stuff out of that tank and then wash it all out with vinegar 
if not bleach. It might have to be a job for bleach and time uh, evaporating off. But thank you guys for watching. Sorry, I don't have uh, the best. I need to get a gimbal where like the camera stays uh, smooth. So that's something I'm looking at. Patreon. Um, how big do Royal Pleco go grow? Um, last I checked, Royal Pleco is a term that encompasses several different species, like eight or nine at least. And some of them grow like a foot long, others grow like six inches long. So I don't know for sure which one you're referring to, but they, they get a decent size. They're not like the huge ones, like a rub, like a, you know, just a plain old pleco as it's known, uh, but they do get a decent size. So it takes time though. So I wouldn't worry too much. I mean, I've got two in this tank that's a 20 gallon. So yeah. Yeah, about the size of a football. That's that's a good call. Um, yeah, not a soccer ball, unless it's really got a bad case of dropsy or something. But yeah, so this tank too, just thought I'd point out that the cherry shrimp are humongo, and these were my cold cherry shrimp that I thought were dunzo, like low grade, and they've gotten huge in here, and this is now my cherry shrimp tank. Also, we've got the catfish that... We're still digging to get a for sure uh, scientific name on them. There may not be one, but they were from the wet spot. And the guy got them from an expedition into Colombia where somebody brought back a bunch of fish. And they look really similar to emerald quarry cats. And there's also another one that's like a purple uh, banded. But they, they have purple to gray, and it turns really like a periwinkle purple on their side and then they've got a shoulder strap and a line down their spine that can be as orange or or cream it, it starts as like a cream color or a tan color back in man the lighting is terrible in here with this youtube filming i'm sorry uh also this is the low tech tank and i wanted to point out that the walikia you can't see it but it is bright pink so the ritala walikia or walichia uh, are is doing great and that is really cool to see because it's melted in a lot of other tanks also i got um you can't see it because it's in the merc but i got a um oh what's it called is it a brownie golden brownie i want to say carson are you still watching um but carson brought it by and it is a boost plant that is just beautiful and it looks like a little tree. It looks like a little alder tree or I don't know. I don't know what kind of tree it looks like. But let's see. Oh, it fell over. But it's right here and that's half of it. I actually trimmed it because it had forked. And so this will be in the CO2. The other one will be in the, the Amazonia. But uh, Bentley, I probably have some questions for you as we come along with these projects. Also... The Endlers, like there's one that's young that's coloring up really nicely right there. And so we'll see what's up. But I hope everybody's doing well. Also, there's now a Facebook page and an Instagram page because everyone says that they wanted that. And I'm late. What happened to the murky tank? Uh, I'm going to have to say go back. I've gone over it a couple times. But basically, it had a crash. It could be coliform bacteria. It could be an anaerobic bacteria or something like that. Um, Sinus Craig, welcome. Uh, I'm about to wrap it up. If you'd like, I can keep chatting with you guys for a little bit uh, if you have questions. But you can just... Uh, I'd love to give you... Uh, wow. Wow. Um, if you really want to donate something like that, that would be beyond insane, and I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. But if you're really interested in that, in, in donating towards the cause of keeping this channel alive and me working on it this much, like daily, and trying to keep getting new species and grow things and um, bring it in, uh, I... What you could do is you could uh, hit me up on email so or through the Facebook group for Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. My email is just alexanderjwilliamson at gmail.com. Um, but that would be 
so humbling and incredible and would allow me to do a lot of cool stuff uh, in this. And believe me, uh, some of it would just right off the bat go towards shipping supplies so I can ship out some fish to people because that's kind of expensive for the shipping and the packing materials. And so that is, I've been on the Patreon, we've been hovering between 30 and 20 and uh, that would really allow me to reach into a lot of people's tanks and give them plants and fish that would bring me great joy. So if you're serious about that, I mean, well, I'm speechless if you're serious about that. If you're not, um, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but yeah, so also the blue Japanese endlers are all in this tank now. This tank is way beyond capacity, but the nitrates are always at zero no matter how much I seem to put in. So I guess there's enough plant life in here that it's fine, and I do enough water changes. I do uh, about 220s a week uh, if if it's looking skunky at all, but it's pretty loaded. And I think the aquascape I'm going to do over in this tank, so it's just going to be a plant grow tank until it's safe for fish. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a plant grow out tank for a little while, like for a couple weeks till the nitrate and ammonia and, um, nitrite levels are all, uh, in, in normal working order. And, uh, yeah, so that's that. But, um, I'll walk downstairs one more time. So since there's more people trickling in, um, oh yeah, Patreon charges tomorrow. If you wanted to put in $500 right now and sign up on Patreon, you could do that. It would bill you and then you could change your pledge to zero in a couple days. So yeah, you could do that. That, I mean, that would be friggin' incredible. I'd probably get a microphone and I don't know. So that would be bonkers though. You're still blowing my mind. I, I don't even know. We might have to take a vote on what we would do with that money for the channel. So um, especially since I've had health issues, so I haven't been able to throw a ton of my own money. I've been paying off bills from my blood clot and I haven't had a ton of my own money to throw at these projects. Just my time, which is good. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on in here. This is the old tank that was upstairs that was so nicely aquascaped twice and now ripped apart three times, and I need to scoop all that substrate out of there, and then whichever way works for you. Wow, okay, redacted XX. Um, Wait, it's April Fool's Day. But, whatever. So, go on to my Patreon tonight uh, and uh, make a pledge of 500 and it lets you change your pledge so then once it's charged you, change your pledge down. Um, yeah, tomorrow is April Fool's Day, exactly. So that's what I was just thinking. But, whatever. If you are serious, great. If not, don't worry about it i don't know i don't know what to say all right guys well um i've got these lights up here poor timing but wow okay all right if you're serious dude i would love to send you uh you know some baby cribs or whatever it is you want out of my setup that i can share when these guys uh lay eggs again i would love to send you whatever you need i would I would uh, I would take care of because that would go a long way especially to just kind of cleaning up this uh, situation right now um, but yeah and then I could set some money aside to ship people stuff that are outside of my immediate area also I could probably use a couple filters and random things like splitters for hose lines and things like that that would make this rack look a lot better also, uh, we could have, like, what species people are interested in, and we could vote on that and get a hold of that kind of stuff. If there's any caveat of what you'd like it spent on, ideally, like, oh, I like this kind of video, then we can do that, you know? So, um, 
Yeah, so let's go back up there since since you're the man of the hour now. Uh, no offense, everyone else, I love you, uh, but money talks. No, um, but the Spade Tail Endlers, they are a pet project. Lucas Bretz, the amazing Lucas Bretz, he actually started the line as kind of like he had leopard and tiger endlers. And they would throw different colors, uh, like with a yellow base, but then they would throw different colors uh, off. And their tails would have different colors in them and different shapes and things. And so I've selected for a spade tail only with an arctic blue on it. So that's what you're seeing here. And the ones who don't make the cut, I mean, they have the DNA. Here's a young one. Uh, where is he at? Oh, he came up out of there. Um, the ones that don't make the cut, they will be rehoused, but they still have the potential, this next generation, when they mate as a pair to, you know, express the full, beautiful genes, especially when they have so many, uh, babies at one time. So yeah, uh, that's what's going on in these tanks. The Malawa shrimp are doing great. They have reproduced, but I think their babies got eaten. The blue shrimp have a beautiful blue color right now. Um, two are pregnant, so they're kind of hiding. I thought, oh no, they died or something happened, but no. And then also, I like to start raising more egg scatterers, like CPDs and, and nanofish, uh, maybe some Brigitte Resboras, like ones that are kind of harder to, to do by floating their home in the in the water like in a in a net or a basket and then letting them scatter their eggs and then have that quarantine tank essentially remain as a well here's here's a good image of what I'm shooting for with the endlers uh, so yeah but uh redacted xx man if if you're serious and that is so generous uh, get on my Patreon tonight before the billing cycle, and uh, hey JH, welcome. Uh, get on my bill, get on there, make the pledge, and uh, wait like a week or something until it goes through. Sometimes it takes time uh, on my end for it to go through, and I don't know what they would do if you pulled it right away. But then you can change it to zero or a buck or whatever you want to do. But uh, do you have? Do you like any other live bears? other than endlers. Yeah, I love guppies and endlers just because of the color and being able to see the uh, the expression. Wow, thank you so much, Redacted. That is awesome. You are awesome. How long have you been watching the channel and what do you like about the channel? Just because, you know, I want to hear what everyone says, but also you need something a little special for, for something that that big, which would really help out right now. Uh, not that I need like pity, but starving artists with, uh, lupus <laughs> kind of, uh, has been rough lately on the, the copays and the bills in, in our life have been brutal, but the charity of this, um, you made the news tomorrow morning, FYI, what happened? What'd I do? You've been doing great. Love the history aspect. Awesome. Well, the history aspect's what I love, and like if this were my full-time job, if I wasn't doing the graphic design and mural work that I do from time to time, like I do have a lot of free time right now um, compared to a lot of people working, on, like only having to work 20 to 40 hours a week depending on the week. Uh, it really, uh, it really helps. Um, yeah, awesome. So... Very cool. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, it could just be things too, like general upkeep, but I want to do more research. I want to in interview people, go places. So there's a lot of places this channel could go. Uh, you make good content. I have no choice but to put you on the news. <laughs> uh, what news is that? I mean, thank you so much, but uh, I've been on the news for... for a selection of reasons, but fish have never been one of them. <clears throat> uh, fish fam news. All right, dude. I appreciate that. That is rad. I love, I love y'all, the fish fam. Um, and you know, I, I hope you're enjoying this. I want to do like 
the ancient history of fish, fit, fish, fish keeping, how koi came to be. There's so many history videos. Um, uh, you know that I want to to add to the world. You can see here the shrimp have gathered just since we last looked. They're all over that rock. There's like probably 30 or 40 hanging out around there. Um, and yeah, so kind of cool. This tank's, like I said, you know, I might do some videos too on... So every time I get a new plant, as things slow down after this madness that's going on right now, I think what I'll do is I'll make a video and like talk about... For the first part, the basics, so that people can skip the history if they don't want to hear about it. But each time I do a video, um, the Bloody Marys are doing well. So the Bloody Marys were downstairs, and they were in that quote-unquote quarantine tank for now, which has a super low TDS, so I'll need to put some uh, booster in there um, and then uh, take care of that. Oh, the other thing I need to do is make sure the rest of the plants are out of the concoction and get them into the bucket and free of the bleach because you can easily burn out your plants. Um, that's what I love about your content. Well, you know, I'm trying not to do too many like fluffy and I have nothing against it because I like it and I'm not saying I won't do it in the future, but I, I try not to just do like five things I hate about Petco or you know like like the top 10 videos which I do like some of them but a lot of them are just like you're not really informing anybody of uh, something useful and so while they're entertaining I like to to try to find a little more info and so the daily videos are just a, a, a honestly a search engine optimization uh, type ploy to just uh, reach more folks and then the uh, beyond that though it's definitely a couple times a week my goal is to have something with historic merit and value which uh, teaches us a little bit about how we're connected to the to the world at large and um, about the hobby and and the the, the craft that is uh, caring for plants and fish and it's really a lifelong hobby and topic that you can do um, at all ages in some regard and I've met so many people online now that tell me that they are disabled or they have something going on in their life and they almost took their life and they looked down at their fish and they were like, I've got to feed these little silly fry. And because of that, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. And so I don't want to make it sound like all Messiah-y or anything. Um, sorry, I'm just hooking up this water because we really got to rinse this stuff before it gets burned by the bleach. But fish, let's flip around to me see if you can even see me. Um, fish really have meant a lot of things uh, to a lot of people, and um, let me know if you got my test email and the Patreon this week. I will. Uh, so it was Alexander J, as in Job, uh, Williamson, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S-O-N, at gmail.com. That's my email, so you can find me there. Uh, and then people who back also if they want, you know, I've offered to do things like uh, draw their favorite fish or whatnot. So, um, yeah, but thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you, honestly. Like, I'm on a few Patreon pages, and so that's where some of the Patreon money goes, is just to establish... Uh, more people, more contacts in, in the fish world. So, like, I give Lucas Bretz my Patreon money. Um, yeah, gee, I wonder what it would be, Bentley. Is your favorite fish maybe... Um, I'm going to guess that it's probably a goldfish. Um, but, yeah, so... Sorry I'm saying um so much. I'm starting to feel pretty run down. You can see my face is starting to get hives again, so... I'm going to have to abandon the live stream soon where you and Dustin went to the Aqua State fish store. So that fish store 
Uh, yeah, I'm glad you caught me live too. Uh, I usually am on Sunday or or Thursday or Tuesday, so like I will do two of those days. But right now, as a freelancer, I can't promise a day, and I know that sucks for you guys. But I'm trying to do like sometime between two and five, doing like for sure being around, so that y'all can can catch me live on Tuesday or Sunday. This week I did Wednesday and Saturday because I got that shelving system on Wednesday and then all this news came in about like flip stuff is coming soon. Uh, I made a deal with Carson, another guy Eric. Um, yeah, so it, life's crazy. What do you do uh, redacted for a living? Um, you said your, your life's similar so I was just curious. It, uh, if you do some sort of art or something or contracting or whatever um, I'm just filling the bucket yeah you can probably see my eyes starting to swell up more also today I went to a symposium on lupus and autoimmune disorders and that was pretty interesting down at uh, UW Med Center had doctors talking about it and uh, it's what caused my blood clot. It will cause me to die prematurely. Uh, that's pretty much for sure. But that's why um, I am I'm so happy to have you guys in my life and to have my wife. And uh, hey, being an auto mechanic is very creative. And hey, Heather. Um, I have to make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, yeah. I know how that goes. Some months I, I used to be working, you know, 90 hours a week. Like, insane. Like, sleep a couple hours a night. And then I'd be off for a month. Like, waiting for business. So, it's always a crapshoot when you are a freelancer or work for yourself. But, yeah. Um, uh, but, yeah, so... Thank you guys so much. I'm really getting worn down. I'm trying to get this this bucket load of let's see here. I'll show you guys one more time. Of plants that have they've been in the bleach water, now they're just getting normal chlorinated water. Basically bleach and chlorine are really similar, um, if not the same thing. But some bleaches have different uh, like uh, combinations of said ingredients. And so, yeah, uh, Bentley, that sounds good. My wife is out of town coming up here in a week or two. For like a week, she's going to be down in Monterey. She actually, so actually her work offered to fly me to Monterey for the week, but I didn't want to leave the fish right now with everything kind of in flux, but I kind of thought about it. Get your stuff squared away and get some sleep. Thanks for all the videos. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Um, you are beyond generous, and that means a whole lot to me. On that note, happy April Fool's Day to everyone also, because uh, that's where my mind went. But uh, that'll be, what, tomorrow? Um, but yeah, get, in, get it filled out before the billing period ends tonight. I think it charges tomorrow, so just make sure to do it later tonight or early in the morning or whatever um, so that that works out if you want to do it that way. But that would be incredible. Um, yeah, you can catch the next one, Heather. Also, I know Bob uh, Steenfot was doing his stream, and so uh, I kind of unfortunately did did that. Oh, the other thing that that money would be extremely helpful for is a friggin' python. Now that my life is like this, a python would make everything so much easier. Like, a big old snake just to, like, eat all my problems. No, like a 50-foot python uh, deal. Wow! Okay. Side note, bleach started to eat away at the tubing. So now I really need a python. No. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have to... I'll probably wash these in the bathtub. Wife will love that. And uh, yeah, so I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for tuning in, for being a part of this fish fam aspect. So.
support all the other channels obviously I'm still a, a little fry as it were but um, look up to a lot of guys and gals that are that are in the business so uh, the patreon link I can add at the end of this video into the video and uh, yeah I'll check out the news in the morning thank you so much uh, JH Aquatics I appreciate that bud um, back did hope you come <laughs> yeah all right well I don't take life too seriously because uh, you never know what you're gonna get but uh, take care guys uh, much love to you take care of your tanks take care of your people and yourself swim on <laughs>